What's quacking, motherfucker? We're back with another producer practice, and today we're gonna focus on side chaining. I don't know all the technicalities, but essentially it's when you take two sounds and you chain them together so that whenever the secondary sound is playing, it lowers the volume of the primary sound and allows the frequency ranges to breathe a bit more so that, say, a kick doesn't clash with your bass and it really helps drive the rhythm through and get your beat fucking going like some k shit. Let's do this! So winning is done! Custom drum pack. Custom drum pack. Courtesy of episode five. Okay, now that we have our little beat going, we have our bass, we have a little lead to go on top. We have a shaker, kick, a snare, and some random little percussive noise from my piano. We're going to work on the side chaining effect. And so what we're going to want to do on FL is first route everything in your channel rack to a specific mixer track. I like to just do mine in chronological order, one through six for me right here. And then we're going to open up the mixer and find the track, the two separate tracks that we're planning on side chaining to. So for this example, I am side chaining the kick to the bass, which is going to be going from four to one, but yours might look a little bit different. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to keep this volume at zero because when we're side chaining, the kick that is being side chained into here, we don't want them playing at the same time through the same mixer. So what I'm simply going to do is just duplicate this exact same thing, except this mixer is going to go to seven. Okay, so now the kick. We have a kick on channel rack four and on channel rack seven, but channel rack four is not explicitly playing sound. It is just merely information for our side chain. And so now what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to link our kick, the information kick, which will be this one, to the bass or whatever sound you're wanting it to sidechain to. And the way you do it, I already have it routed, but you you pretty much right click on this little arrow right here and hit sidechain to this track only or to this track. And so seeing as it's already sidechained to the bass, we're going to want to click on the mixer track for the bass and we're going to want to open up Fruity Limiter, which is right here. And so we're going to want to leave the limit tab alone and we're going to want to go to the compression tab. We're going to right click on this little side chain box right here and click or select our kick. And so now everything should be good. Let me just open this up a bit more so it's a bit more visible. Okay, so now we're, what we're going to want to do, let's play with the bass and the kick. Okay, to show you what I was talking about earlier, um, for the kick that is the information kick, if you look and you have it sidechained and you start messing with the threshold, which we're going to want to turn low so that it can actually read the frequency of the bass, and you turn up the ratio. So even though the kick wasn't explicitly making a noise, it is still feeding the information to the bass and is allowing the side chain effect to happen where you can see all these dips in volume. But if you have the kick routed into the same thing, it starts to sound a little bit clashing. So I now have the kick on the actual kick separated onto a, on a different track. And that way, when it plays, the kick is nice and crisp, but the bass is still getting 
sidechain. And basically you're going to want to mess around with it until you get that sidechain effect that you're looking for. I think this will be okay for now. So now I'm going to go back and unmute every single thing. And now let's go into our playlist and just see what it sounds like when it's sidechained. Wow, that look, you sound like shit. Holy fuck. Let me mix that a little bit. Okay, I got rid of that whoop and that lead after not hearing it for a while. I don't fuck with it anymore. And that is music, folks. You can hear that little sidechain effect. It's probably not as prominent in this example, but it's a cool little cool little trick if you want your kicks to stand out and just kind of give it a bit more of a rhythm, a bit more of a bounce. It lets the kick breathe a little bit more and just gives it a bit more room to do its thing. Just to try and do a bit more of a side-by-side -side comparison, I'm going to be clicking the Fruity Limiter on and off just to see what the sidechain difference sounds like. Whenever this crazy Aurora Borealis looking thing is going on that means that it's off and then whenever it's back it means that it is back on and so we're just going to do a little side by side comparison right away i can tell that the kick stands out a lot more once the bass is sidechained to it. If it's not sidechained, the kick just kind of gets lost in that, that sub bass synthy kind of sound that I selected. And it really just helps accentuate it and just kind of bring that rhythm out. But you can still hear the bass, which is nice. And it's not like it completely disappears. It just simply lowers a little bit and just helps the rhythm kind of breathe a bit more. Okay, before I end the video, I wanna play it out on the loudspeakers just to see if there's a more significant difference than the laptop recording of the beat. Just to give you one more way of hearing what the beat sounds like when it's side-chained and when it's not. A little side-by-side -side comparison. <laughs> this is side-chain. This is not side chain. You can hear that the sub gets a lot lower and dips a lot more. It, it kind of makes it sound more like dark to me. Like boss music or some shit. But yeah, that's pretty much it. When you side chain your shit, your kicks stand out a bit more and the bass might lose a little bit of its loudness. But for this example, the bass in this beat came out better than I originally made it just because it, it, it was overwhelming with the kick. And now that it was being side chained out by that kick, it overall just was a better sound for me. Anyway, hopefully you learned something. I definitely learned how to do it. It's a cool little feature to know how to do. Uh, so I'll catch you next Friday with the next producer practice. Dose.